This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and what we have here is a silver tone magic glow, which probably means just simply glow in the dark hands. AM clock radio from, I believe, about 1966. This is a 5-tube AM set that was built by Warwick Electronics, and we know that because of the 528 chassis number prefix. Uh, if it was a 132 chassis number prefix, that would indicate an Arvin set. Picked this up at the flea market for a few dollars. They said the clock works, but the radio doesn't. So let's open it up and see what's going on with it. Okay, we have vacuum bulbs lighting up, but that's about as far as it goes. So uh, let's check our power supply voltages and uh, the voltages in the audio audio output stage. First, I'm going to check the B plus voltage on the audio output transformer, and that'll be very convenient, seeing as how the the wires are soldered directly to the transformer here. The red wire will be the B plus input. The blue wire will go to the plate of the audio output tube. Okay, let's see what we have here. And we have nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing on either side of the audio output transformer. So let's dig back into our power supply. Now checking at pin 7, the cathode of the 35W4 rectifier tube. And we still have nothing. Now let's look at pin 5 of the rectifier. That's our, that's our plate voltage, which is our incoming 120 volts AC. Let's see what we got here. hundred and twenty volts AC so what does that tell us we have hundred and twenty volts AC going into the rectifier and nothing coming out so that means the rectifier tube is bad now normally these rectifier tubes don't self-destruct on their own it can happen but usually when a rectifier tube goes bad something caused it to go bad like a shorted capacitor so we're not going to just simply plug in another tube. We're going to check a couple of things first. This radio has a lot of Japanese parts in it. The tubes are all Japanese. You can see these two Japanese capacitors here and those are always trash. Our speaker is Japanese so yeah I think this was pretty much the end of silver tone tube radios. Okay, I replaced the rectifier tube and just went ahead and replaced the capacitors that are high failure parts. I uh, figured I've been ticking enough, ticking enough people off by not replacing capacitors lately, so I figured I'd replace these three right here just so uh, the ones who like to see capacitors replaced can have a orgasm. And we're producing results now, but still got a ways to go. Oh, what Bama has been able to do in terms of away. Volume could be a little bit better. Has been. Okay, let's take a break and check the capacitors that we pulled out. This is the first Japanese .025 microfarad capacitor. I'm getting nothing at all in the way of an eye opening on our eye tube here. Let's test it for leakage. Uh, yeah, on the lowest scale. It's very leaky. We're not even flashing. We're just staying on all the time. Okay, Japanese capacitor number two. We're not getting much in the way of an eye opening. Leakage. Same deal as number one. And the electrolytic actually tests pretty good. It could have probably stayed, but oh well. Okay, back on the radio, we're going to check some voltages starting with the audio output tube. And I have the tube plugged into my uh, test adapter that'll make it a lot easier to test voltages without having to pull a chassis and flip it over. Alright, let's look at the cathode voltage on the 50C5 output tube. That's pin 7. And I'd like to see probably in the 8 to 10 volt range. And we're not getting near about that much. 2.6 volts, 2.7 volts. 
leads me to believe that tube is most likely weak. Now let's check the plate and screen voltages. With a weak tube, I would anticipate those to be on the high side. 130. Yeah, yeah, that does seem a little bit high. So what's happening here, the tube is weak and it's not conducting as, as heavily as it should. Therefore, our cathode voltage is very low and our plate voltage is higher than normal because the tube is not placing a, a full load on the power supply. Now let's plug in another 50C5 and see what we get. Okay, here's 50C5 number 2 and I can already tell some improvement. Now this is a used tube, it's not a new one, so it's not as strong as what a new one could be. And our cathode voltage is up to 6.3, so that's better. Now let's look at our plate voltage here. You can see it went down, which means the tube is conducting more than the other tube was and putting a full load on the power supply and our screen voltage went down. Now just to prove my point, let's see what the tube tester has to say. This is the old 50C5 and as you can see it's indeed weak, bad, on its way out. And here's our better 50C5. See how much better that reads? Okay, I replaced the tube and I replaced the cathode bias resistor on the output tube. It has gone up in value. Works pretty good now. Okay, that ought to about do it. So just to recap, dead 35W4 rectifier tube was making the whole radio inoperative. These two Japanese capacitors were extremely leaky. We could have taken out the rectifier tube. Then once we got it playing, the 50C5 output tube was severely weak. And this 150 ohm cathode resistor for the output tube was up to about 170 ohms. So we replaced that and I tweaked the tremors on the tuning condenser and it's working pretty good now. Welcome back to Animals Today. Make sure to visit us. Okay, there you go. Back in operation again. Hopefully we'll be good for another few decades. This was a fairly basic radio repair. Nothing, nothing exotic here. But hope you got something out of it. And thanks for watching. And we'll try to find another project a little later on down the road. Street Dog Project. He's the president there. And he's also a member of the Animal Advisory Commission in Dallas. Maybe we can learn about what's going on and see if we can uh, shed any light on the situation. Hey, JP. Thank you for uh, having, uh, having me on your show today.